everything you need to know about hamstring training. So in order to fully develop all of the different heads of the hamstring or different muscles of the hamstring, we're going to need to hit three different movement patterns. We need some kind of hip hinge, preferably with a uh, fixed knee, so something like an RDL, okay, that's going to be your ideal movement here, or a stiff leg deadlift, okay. And what this is going to allow you to do, it's going to train pretty much all of the heads of the hamstring, and it's going to train them at a long muscle length, which is going to be optimal for hypertrophy. However, the short head of the biceps femoris, which doesn't cross the hip, so all of the other muscles of the hamstring are biarticular, so they cross both the knee and the hip. The short head of the biceps femoris only crosses the knee, which means that if you want to train that accurately, you need to be doing some knee flexion work, which you don't get with your hip hinging. So therefore, we need to be having a look at a seated hamstring curl. Now, a seated hamstring curl is going to work both heads of the biceps femoris and also the other major muscles of the uh, hamstring, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus. Okay? However, there is also one other muscle which we could technically class as a hamstring, and that is the sartorius, which is basically like this strip muscle that runs from the front of your hip here through and attaches on down here. Now, in order to hit this at an effective muscle length, this is going to be the one most effectively hit with a lying hamstring curl. So we need all three for complete hamstring development.